What happens when your brain favors one eye over the other during your critical development period? In this episode of OkiTalk, optometrist Amaka Okeke explains what amblyopia is, what the different types are, how it is diagnosed, and how to treat it. Hello and welcome to Aki Talk. Today we're going to be talking with optometrist Amaka Okeke. Doctor, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for joining us. To get us started, can you tell us a little bit about your background and your specialty? Yeah. So my name is Dr. Okeke. I am Nigerian, but I was born and raised here in Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, I went to optometry school at Salus University in Pennsylvania, and I was in their Accelerated Scholars Program. I graduated last year in 2023, and now I work at a private practice here in Maryland. Um, We specialize in primary care, ocular health, we do myopia control, um, specialty contact lenses, pediatrics, so just a little bit of everything. Wonderful, that sounds like you cover quite a bit. For our discussion today, we were hoping you could talk to us about amblyopia. What exactly is it? Yes, so amblyopia is what most people would refer to as a lazy eye. So this is when one of your eyes has decreased vision, but it is otherwise healthy. So there's no structural or pathological abnormality, but you do have reduced vision in one eye. So what causes that to happen? Yes. So we have what we call a critical development period. And this is from the time we are born to when we're about seven to nine years old. This is when our vision is developing. So sometimes what can happen is our brain favors one eye over the other and the uh, weaker eye develops poor vision. So that's what gives you the amblyopia in one eye. How common is it? Um, It's relatively common. Actually, I see it quite a bit. Um, but it happens in about two to three percent of children. So three in every 100 child will will have amblyopia. Are there different types of amblyopia? There are. So there are three different types. Um, The most common one that people think about, I think, is the strabismic amblyopia. So that's when one eye is misaligned. So the eye is either turned out or turned in. Um, The other type is called deprivation amblyopia. So that happens when um, during birth, you could be born with maybe a congenital cataract or a ptosis where your eyelid is drooping down, blocking your line of sight. So in those cases, when something is obstructing one eye, your vision isn't able to fully develop and you know that'll give you poor vision in one eye. Um, the last type is called refractive amblyopia. So that is when you have two completely different refractive areas or um, glasses prescriptions in one eye. So one prescription might be much higher than the other eye, or you can have two very, um, high prescriptions um, in both eyes. Um, So those can give you amblyopia as well. What are the most common manifestations? Like what signs or symptoms should I be looking for to alert me that myself or somebody else has amblyopia? Yeah, so um, the most obvious one I think would be the eye misalignment. So if one eye is turned out or turned in, that is um, definitely a big sign. And children also, you might notice that they favor one eye over the other. So they might shut one eye or kind of squint one eye. Um, Sometimes kids also turn their head or tilt their head one way or the other to compensate for the poor vision in one eye. Um, Another sign is people have um, poor depth perception. So if you notice that your child might not um, be able to tell how close or far something is, that could be another sign that they have amblyopia as well. So what is the diagnostic process like for that? What tests are available to help diagnose it? Yeah, so the way to diagnose amblyopia is basically to rule out everything else. So you have to do a comprehensive eye exam in order to um, 
to be confident that it's amblyopia. So, you know, we start by checking your vision. Um, if we see that one eye has really good vision and the other eye has poor vision, that could be a sign of amblyopia. We can also do what we call a cover test that can test if one eye is misaligned. Um, we would then check your refraction or your glasses prescription. If we see that your prescriptions are different, or if one is um, you know, much higher than the other one, or they're both really high, that could be another sign of amblyopia. Um, we would then look at the front health of your eyes to see if anything is causing the poor vision in one eye. Um, and then of course we dilate your eyes, check your retina to see if anything is um, affected there. So once we rule out everything else, we can then say, okay, the poor vision is due to having a lazy eye or amblyopia. So what treatment options are available for those? Yeah, so it depends on the type of amblyopia that you have. So if you do have strabismic amblyopia or the eye misalignment, um, when you are a child, it's very important um, to treat all of these um, different types because once you are over about 10 years old, I would say it gets harder and harder to correct the amblyopia. So um if you have strabismic amblyopia, there is a strabismus surgery where the doctor can realign your eyes and your vision will be able to fully develop after that. Um, for deprivision amblyopia, um, the treatment is to kind of remove the obstruction. So if you do have a cataract in one eye, you can remove the cataract. If your eyelid is drooping down, you can lift the eyelid. And then um, after that, your vision should be able to fully develop. Um, for the refractive amblyopia, there are a few different things we can do. Um, we start off by correcting the patient's vision fully. So we give them glasses and we instruct them to wear the glasses consistently all day, every day. Um, there's actually a pretty good prognosis when kids um, stick to it and they wear their glasses all the time. It can actually help to strengthen their vision. Um, but if in the kids that it doesn't work, we then do occlusion therapy. So that's when. Um, we get an eye patch and we patch the stronger eye. That forces your brain to use um, the weaker eye, work the eyes, eye muscles, and you know that can improve the vision. So they would patch their strong eye for a few hours a day um, to strengthen the eye with the poor vision. Um, some kids refuse to wear an eye patch. Um, so there's another thing you can do. You can use an eye drop called atropine. And it's the same concept. You would just drop... Um, uh, what drop an eye drop in the strong eye to blur the vision in that eye. And again, um, you know, that will cause the weak eye to strengthen. So once it's treated, corrected the vision, is it gone? Is it cured? Is, is the same ability to go away once treated? Yeah, so that depends on a few things. First of all, like I said, age. Um, it's very important to try to treat amblyopia during the critical development period. So again, um, better prognosis in kids that are under 10, even though over 10, even adults sometimes, um, the treatments can cure the amblyopia. Um, also, they have to be consistent with the treatment. So you can't just you know patch one day and then wait a month to do it again. You have to stay consistent. Um, the severity of the amblyopia also matters. Um, so some people have, you know, mildly poor vision where other people's vision, uh, you know, is much worse. So these are all factors. But um, yes, it's definitely possible um, to, you know, completely cure amblyopia. Um, the goal is to get the vision as close to 2020 as possible. Um, so yeah, there's, it's definitely possible in a lot of cases. Um, sometimes you can improve the vision, but it won't be, you know, you know, as strong as we would like, but it just depends. So once it's been treated and my vision is good, my lazy eyes corrected, my cataracts is removed, is this something that can come back again later in life? In some cases, um, it can. And then in those cases, we would, you know, go back to doing the therapy, patching for a few hours a day. Um, in other cases, um, it doesn't come back. So it's definitely situational. And again, it just depends how early you catch it, how consistent you are with the treatment and how severe the amblyopia is. What happens if it goes completely untreated? 
Yeah, um, this unfortunately does happen. So if it goes untreated, um, you would obviously be left with one eye that has poor vision. Um, and this could actually affect your life a little bit. Um, for example, if you have strabismic amblyopia um, and one eye turns a certain way, um, some kids, you know, go through bullying at school because they look different. Um, also, if you don't have binocular vision, so if you only are using one eye to see, this could affect a lot of things in your life. Like if you're trying to play certain sports that require you to use both eyes, if you're trying to get certain jobs like, um, you know, police officers or jobs that require you to drive, sometimes you need both eyes. So um, this can affect your life a little bit if you don't get it treated. How common are surgical treatments for amblyopia? Yeah, very common, very common, um, especially in kids. As soon as um, your doctor sees that you have an eye turn, they'll um, definitely refer you for treatment. That's definitely what we want to do. Um, well, is there anything else you would like to tell our viewers about amblyopia today? Yeah, um, I would just want to emphasize the importance of taking your children to get their eyes examined. Um, I would say when they're as young as three years old, you should take them to an optometrist to get an annual eye exam because, you know, sometimes kids don't know what's abnormal. You know, they just got here, so they don't know that, you know, there's better vision or they don't know you're supposed to use two eyes. Um, and sometimes only your doctor would be able to tell. So Definitely, if your kid is about to start school, take them in just to get that full eye exam. Amblyopia is something that can affect um, their schoolwork um, and their quality of life, like I said. So definitely take your kids and take yourself, of course, to get an eye exam done every year. Well, thank you so much, doctor. It's really been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time.